Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now, I have done a video about the uh, full contents of my AMD Ryzen box, but inside it was a Gigabyte AX370 Gaming 5. And I thought that we could do a uh, little box opening and a good look around the board so that you guys can see what's going on. Now, straight away, I'm actually, what, really? Okay. Okay, it's come with the um, mount for the Noctua cooler that I got in the box, pre-mounted. But the most important thing is we're gonna have a good look around the board. I've got a stand that we can put it on. We'll have a good look around the board. We can also show you anything interesting that's going on in the box. So uh, everything is kind of Aorus branded now because they're switching over to that. So we've got some Aorus cable ties. These are Velcro ones. There's an RGBW extender because they do do RGB W kits and what that does mean is it's got a specific uh, white channel uh, so that if you do have a white motherboard or you want to highlight other colours in your case rather than bleaching them out you flick the white on and it picks the colours out and actually makes them pop. So the fact that they're the only ones that are doing it at the moment is um, uh, quite shocking but I'm, I'm assuming that the others might catch up eventually. We've got a uh, High bandwidth SLI bridge, if you do want to filter your rig up with some NVIDIA cards, considering this is all going to be about the fanboys and filling them up with AMD. But, you know, we might have uh, new AMD graphics cards coming out in a month or so, so yeah, anyway. So we've got hard drive identification cables. You can see that they're all coloured as well. You can also, you've got HDD 1, 2, 3, 4, and then optical disk drive 1, SSD 1, SSD 2. You've got a few different ones on there as well so that's kind of cool this looks like a thermal probe because you've got the pick up there and then but that's a really really long cable if it's a thermal probe so we'll find out more about that we will be doing a full review um, later on just in case you're wondering um, it's just because it's new and they're not really out yet so I'm just trying to give you a bit of an insight then we've got the uh, back plate we've got four black SATA cables an Aorus badge for those of you that like to uh, clutter up the outside of your PC and then you get your manual and your driver disc. Okie chokey. So I've got the board and I do have a stand but it's an old stand that Gigabyte sent me and it's got another logo on it so we won't be using that in this video. So to have a look around we're going to start around the back and then we have these are our amp up um, USB ports. So these give you a slightly better power. Uh, these are also quite good for charging stuff as well, like your phones or your uh, iPads and all that sort of stuff. But these are so you can connect them to external USB DACs. Good to have a little bit of a read up about these if you're into it and you're into your kind of like your external audio rather than using the internal audio stuff. But yeah, give those a read. Then we've got a uh, HDMI output. So it's a board that is going to support the uh, CPUs that come with an uh, onboard graphics chip. Now AM4, AM4 specific will support all of the CPUs that go on AM4. So it won't support the old AM3 stuff. So the stuff that's already available, you know, like the older CPUs, it does not support those. But AM4 does support every single one of the new CPUs. So everything from the baby uh, APUs right up to the eight core 16 thread 1800X. So that's a good thing. Other good thing to think about while we are high is the AM4 mount is different pinouts from the old AM3 one. So your old coolers will work if they mount onto the little tabs. But if they don't mount onto the little tabs and they screw through the board, then you'll need a different cooler or a different mount. So keep that in mind. Tabs, backwards compatible, go through the board, not backwards compatible. The actual screw points are different. Back round to the back, we do have a USB 3.1 C and A. We've got four USB uh, threes. I'm gonna assume that you, these are USB two considering they're red, but I've not looked at the specs on the box. Then we've got two gigabit uh, um, ethernet ports. And I'm just looking around because yes, here we go, look. Killer ethernet. I don't know whether one's Intel and one's killer because uh, Gigabyte do have, a, yeah, here we go, Intel GBE LAN. So we've got one Intel and one killer, so you can pick and choose. 
then uh, while we, we've got the um, uh, audio out here, gold-plated connectors, you can see it's all nice. You can also see, talking about the um, audio, that we've got amp-up audio here. And that does look like that's going to be a little light bar just there, which is RGBW. And then we've got the audio capacitors there. Talking about RGBW, it's down here. So you've got 12 volt out, green out, red out, blue out, and then a dedicated white out. So rather than four pins, there's five. You can also see the uh, trails down the board here for the audio. When we go back up to the top, system fan one is there. And then over here, we've got CPU fan and CPU fan optional. Coming around the board, there are two more fan outs here. I'm uh, sys fan two and five. It's saying here, but then there's also uh, there's a that's a water pump header as well. I, literally, I'm scanning around the board. This is the first time I've seen it as well. And then down the bottom, we've got sys fan four, three, and six. And then this one is also a pump out as well. Two internal USB twos, which is rather nice. You've got a PCI poster here, or a um, poster readout, LED poster readout, whatever you want to call it. There is two internal USB 3s here. A lot of cases do support um, uh, two USB 3s on the front of the cases now, where you can upgrade them as well. <clears throat> so that's worth com uh, considering. I'm just looking to try and find out. That is your reset switch there. And then the other one is the uh, CMOS clear switch or a CMOS chain switch, you've got the overclock button, the power switch. Just looking around to pick out other stuff. Down here you've got the BIOS switch. So this top one you can flick it between one and two for pre-saved BIOSes. So the switch up here, the push switch, is the BIOS clear. And then this one is to switch between the two. The SB switch that's here, this is all to do with different modes on the audio. Then we've also got a single M.2. I can't see another M.2. There's not another M.2 around the back. So single M.2 on this. You can see though, if they've um, these you always used to be like a silvery gunmetal colour, those chokes. And they've made them black so that they kind of hide themselves better on the board. And around the outside, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got 10 phases of power around the outside of the CPU socket area, and you can see the caps all lined up there as well. So there's actually a fair bit of um, uh, power going in. I'm just looking for other things going on around the board. Can see an LED pin out here. I don't know whether this is for RGB or not. 12 volt GRB. So yeah, that there is actually a normal four pin RGB pin out. It's a bit strange that it's right in the middle here and not at the top, but I'm going to assume that this might be so that you can connect your RGB on your uh, AMD cooler up. But again, I think I would have preferred it up with the actual CPU fan connector, rather than having one cable going up there and then one cable coming over here. So that's a bit backwards, unless, obviously I've not seen the cooler, unless the cooler, the outputs are on different sides, you know, for the cables. Single eight pin CPU, yeah, it's not really great deal else for us to talk about other than the fact it's white and I do think that's very brave because don't get me wrong I do like white motherboards you know me personally but I, I, I do understand that it is quite niche and I do does make me wonder whether black would have sold more to you guys but yeah so uh, looking around the board, we do know that this is going to be RGB and this lights up. This is also customizable. You can take this off and you can um, etch your own. I'm hoping some places are going to sell them so that you can customize it. Uh, you know, you can buy them pre-done. Uh, also, what I'm assuming that you're going to see is a lot of SI, so system integrators, people that you buy pre-made, pre-built PCs from. I'm assuming that these are going to end up getting customized with their name and stuff on them. So that's RGB. The um, bits in between the memory slots, that's RGB, but there's nothing on the IO at the back. There's no special wiring or anything going on on the inside, so it's quite plain. So the only other place I can definitely see is down here. I don't know whether there might be something going on underneath the heatsink, but I don't think so, just having a quick scan around. But anyway, that was our 
brief look at the Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5. It's the second one of the um, Ryzen 370 boards that I've managed to give you a preview of. We will be doing a full review on this in due course. It will be after the CPU review, but I will be getting them done as quick as I possibly can. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. Ding!